In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. As we continue our little reflections, and finish them today, on the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, let's turn to the Saint Peter Julian Amard. Listen to his profound words. He says, The Eucharist is in excess of what was needed for the work of redemption. It was not required of Jesus Christ by his Father's justice. The Passion and Calvary were sufficient to reconcile us with God and open for us the doors of our Father's home. Why then did our Lord institute the Eucharist? He instituted it for Himself to satisfy Himself, to content His heart Even if it had been useless to us, the Eucharist was a need for our Lord. St. Peter Julian Amard. What's he saying here? He's saying that God instituted the Mass and the Eucharist first and foremost for Himself to satisfy His heart. And then for us. So first for God, then for us. His heart could do nothing else but this complete self-gift, which is the Eucharist. If he was to be true to himself, this is what he had to do, regardless of how we received it. So first and foremost, the Mass, the Eucharist, is for him. That's an amazing fact. It's hard for us sometimes to accept. The Mass is first for God. Second, it's for us. Why is it first for God? It's true worship. It's worship that's owed to Him. And He's given us the ability to worship Him perfectly. With the perfect prayer, with the perfect sacrifice. Because in justice, we owe God worship. And we're so limited, so little, that we can't do it right. So He provided a way. And that's what the Mass is. The way we can worship God in a fitting manner. So first, Mass is for God. Second of all, the Mass is for us. This is one of the reasons why the priest faces the altar at this traditional Mass. This is why he faces the crucifix. I'm worshiping God. If you turn the altar around, people could get under the impression that you're worshiping the people. Also, this is why he kisses the altar before turning around. He's as it were, because it's first and foremost for God, he's as it were saying, I'm sorry, Lord, I got to turn my back on you for a moment and gather the prayers of the people. So he's asking, as it were, a little forgiveness. Excuse me, Lord. The kiss is an excuse, as it were. This is also why the priest reads the readings first to God. If you know your scriptures, you'll know in the book of Exodus, when Moses was on the mountain and Joshua was down in the valley fighting Amalek, God commanded Moses to write this down in a book. And he said, speak these words in the ears of Joshua. Joshua is a Hebrew name for Jesus. So the priest is in the place of Moses on the mountain with his arms outstretched. That's what the manna pulls for, to keep his arms outstretched, to remind us we're on the cross. And he speaks the words of the book that's been inspired by God. He speaks them in the ears of Joshua. So he speaks them to Jesus. Mass is first for God. 
This is why the Mass is a summation of the life of Christ. This is why there are 33 crosses in the Mass. This is why the priest is even encouraged to pray the Mass to, when he's alone, when there's nobody in the pews, because it's first for God. You don't need people in the pews to say the Mass. It's for God, first and foremost. So Mass is Christ-centered. God-centered. Now, since Mass is first for God, that doesn't mean we have to receive communion every time we go to Mass. It's first and foremost worship of God. But now let's look at the secondary element of Mass, the secondary purpose. It's for us so that we can worship God properly, but also that we can receive the fruits of Christ's sacrifice. And I want to focus here on communion. If we do go to communion, it's very important that we collect the graces that are available to us. Just as we have to gather together all kinds of kindling wood and logs to start a blaze... So too, after communion, we need to collect the graces of the Eucharist so that charity can be kept aflame in our hearts and not go out until our next communion we can inflame it again. So we need to gather together the logs and the kindling wood and store it up and so it can be put on the fire throughout the day. Keep it burning. So I put this under the title of Collecting the Graces. I want you to collect the graces that are available to you at Mass, especially Holy Communion. Listen to St. Alphonsus. He says, The time that follows Mass is a time for amassing treasures of graces. St. Alphonsus quotes St. Teresa of Jesus as hearing our Lord say to her after Holy Communion, What do you wish me to do for you? What do you wish me to do for you? Ask him all the things you need done. Things that you need to do. So then, what are our duties for this day? What faults are we trying to conquer? What sins are we trying to avoid? According to sacramental theology... The more the soul disposes herself by good acts while the consecrated species are inside, the greater the fruit the soul derives from Holy Communion. Also, St. Alphonsus says that our acts of devotion are more meritorious at this time because they are performed by the soul while she is intimately united with our Savior. On the other hand, St. Bernard tells us that our Lord will not lose any of His graces by giving them to the ungrateful. So don't expect anything if you're not grateful. It's not magic. you got to work at it. Now, one way we can do this is by using St. Ignatius of Loyola's beautiful prayer, beautiful prayer, Anima Christi. It's famous. So after we receive communion, we should pray that prayer. And I'm going to give you a way to pray it. Okay? Here we go. Starts out. Soul of Christ, be my sanctification. Stop. Now, add on things like this. Make me fight the good fight today, Lord. Help me run the good race. Illumine my mind with your thoughts so that I'll have the mind of Christ. Move my will with your will to hate what you hate, to love what you love, to hate what you hate, to love what you love. That's an important prayer. Move my will to do the good you want it to do today. 
Inflame my gifts of the Holy Ghost with your gifts of the Holy Ghost. Inflame them with wisdom and knowledge and understanding and counsel and piety. Fear of the Lord and courage. Soul of Christ, be my sanctification. We go to the next one. Body of Christ, be my salvation. We can exclaim to our Lord, O body of Christ, save me from my faults and failings. Save me from the wickedness and snares of the devil. Make me love. Make me love your mystical body, the church. All her members, both real and potential. And everybody that we meet is a potential member of the church. Even the most foul sinner can become a member of the church. Help me love them. Blood of Christ, fill all my veins. Inebriate me with faith, hope, and charity, with prudence, justice, temperance, and courage, with humility, meekness, patience, chastity, and obedience. Ask Him to fill you with those virtues you need. Water from Christ's side, wash out my stain. Beg for the grace of compunction, which is tears. Pray for tears that you will weep for what your sins have done to our Lord. That all your sins, all the stains will be wiped away. Water from Christ's side, wash out my stains. Passion of Christ, my comfort be. Strengthen me, O Lord, to suffer for you and carry out your holy will. Courage to carry my cross. Courage even to be nailed naked upon the cross. Detached from all things of the world for you. This is how we can pray. At receiving Holy Communion. We should finish this prayer. We say, O oh, good Jesus, listen to me in thy wounds. I long to hide, never to be parted from thy side. What does that mean? Lord, never let me leave your church. Kill me first. Don't let me leave. Never let me be parted from thy side. Guard me when the foe assails me. Guide me when my feet shall fail me. Bid me come to thee above with thy saints to sing thy love forever and ever. Grant me, O Lord, the graces to persevere and fulfill my duties of my state in life. Now, when you receive communion, be very particular with our Lord. Say, Lord, I need graces today to do my homework, to teach catechism class, to clean the house. Ask for the graces you need to do all the things you need to get done. And He will grant them to you. And you'll find that your burden is easy. The yoke is light. What a beauty it is. What a wonder it is to have the Mass. To have this power before us every day. And when you can't go to Mass, then make a spiritual communion. Unite yourself with the masses being offered throughout the world and say to yourself, Oh Lord, I know you're going into a soul right now somewhere in Holy Communion. Will you come to me and be with me and grant me the graces to fulfill my duties of my state in life? In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.